Hi, good afternoon everybody. How are you today? Don't forget, same as always, if you go to my homepage, stevenaskew.com, you can find the script for this talk and all my other talks, and you can find sample questions, uh, answers, and the MP3, of course. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Today, I'd like to talk to you about bicycles. Now, I use my bicycle a lot. I cycle to and from work every day. I live very close to a streetcar and a subway station, but I cycle as much as possible. I have a seat that goes on the back for my daughter, and we cycle a lot. Right now it's winter, there's a lot of snow on the ground, but I've bought myself some winter tires, so I can even cycle in weather like this. The tires grip pretty well when it's icy or compacted snow. When it's fresh, loose snow, I slip a bit, but, and obviously I don't put my daughter on the back in the snow. So I cycle a lot. I like my bicycle, and of course, I wear a helmet, safety conscious. So let's talk a little bit about the background of bicycles. The word bicycle, the etymology of the word bicycle, actually comes from France. 1868 is the very first usage of the word. It was spelled B-Y-S-I-C-L-E-S, and even though it was in France, it was in an English newspaper called the Daily News. So that's where the word comes from. But of course, bicycles existed before that. They just weren't called bicycles. The very first bicycle was invented in 1817 by a man called Baron Karl von Dreis. Now this bicycle was not very similar to bicycles you would ride today. It did have two wheels and a seat, but that's where it ended. Um, this bicycle had no pedals. Basically it was two wheels and a wooden frame, and you would sit in the middle of the wooden frame and you would scoot along. You would run along the ground and you would scoot, and it would make it much easier for you to go faster. That was the very first type of bicycle. It was called a velocipede or a dreisine. The man who invented it, Carl von Dreis, dreisine. But those names didn't stick, obviously. 1860, the first bicycle with pedals was invented. Now, in 1860, the pedals were attached directly to the front wheel. So you would have a seat and a back wheel and a front wheel, of course, and you would sit backwards and you would pedal on the front wheel. Now, of course, if you know anything about bicycles, the bigger the wheel, the more rotation you can get and the easier it is to pedal, in theory. So that's why bicycles like the penny farthing were invented. The penny farthing was called the penny farthing because um, English money at the time, a penny was a large coin and a farthing was a small coin. And a penny farthing has a very large front wheel, uh, 2.5 meter circumference, I believe, and a very small back wheel and you would sit up high on the bicycle and you would pedal. And because you could turn a very large wheel, it meant you could go faster. Um, penny farthings are obviously very difficult to ride. Now, there were obviously problems with those bicycles. Um, they were very difficult to pedal, they're very difficult to steer, they're inefficient, and there are a lot of accidents. If you hit something, you're going to fall from a quite high up in the sky. <laughs> Now these bicycles, up until this point, were basically called bone shakers. They're called bone shakers because roads at the time were not tarmacked, were not beautiful roads like we have now. They were basically made of cobblestones. That means many, many uh, large stones are set into a concrete road. If you're walking, it's okay. If you're on a horse, it's okay. If you're riding on a bicycle that has a metal frame and wooden wheels with no rubber, you're going to be shaking your bones like that all the way along. So they were called bone shakers. And of course, they didn't have any brakes. So you had to stop by putting your feet on the ground, which means if you're on a penny farthing, you basically can't stop. OK, 1885, the next big invention, the chain drive was invented. The chain drive meant that pedals no longer had to be connected to either of the wheels. You could put the pedals underneath the person, which meant you had a better balance. They were exactly beneath your center of balance. It also meant you could put more pressure on them, and it also meant the front wheel could be free for just steering. Okay? So once you, have a train, once you have a chain drive, it becomes much easier to go faster, to go uphill, and to basically pedal. Now, these bicycles still had metal frames, and they still had uh, hard wheels, but these were made of solid rubber. So they were a little bit softer than basically wood, but they're still pretty hard. These bicycles were called the safety bicycle. They didn't have brakes. I'm not sure why they were called that. But anyway, they were called the safety bicycle. That was 1885. 1888, just three years after that, the 
most important, and probably the second most important invention for the bicycle comes out. John Boyd Dunlop. Maybe you've heard the name Dunlop, I don't know. It's a huge tyre company. So what Dunlop did, he was from Scotland, he actually worked out how to inflate rubber. He worked out how to make thin rubber inner tubes that you could inflate with air to make a cushion. That was a huge invention because it meant these bicycles were no longer bone shakers. You could have a comfortable ride and you could ride over almost any surface. So these uh, pneumatic tires were a huge blessing to the bicycle. And once they were invented, the number of bicycles, the ownership of bicycles um, exploded, basically. So, uh, 1888, the pneumatic tire. Then from 1888 to 1890, we had uh, gears. Gears were invented. Obviously, you need different gears to go up different gradients. Uh, aluminium frames were invented. Hollow frames were invented. And brakes. Brakes were invented. Brakes are very, very important. But since 1890, there have been no real huge leaps in bicycling, in the uh, structure of a bicycle. I mean, the frames have got lighter, the wheels have got thinner and lighter, and bicycles have been improved, but there have been no great um, leaps, basically. Who knows, maybe there's one coming in the future. So, that's the background of bicycles. Um, there are a lot of bikes in the world, obviously. There are about 130 million bikes sold per year, and most of those are made in China in South Asia as well. Uh, the Netherlands has the most bicycles in the world. Number one, the Netherlands. Number two, Denmark. Number three, Germany. Those are the biggest cycling countries in the world. Bicycles are very important. Bicycles have had a huge impact on society. When they were invented, well, not when they were invented, when they were improved. So about 1885, well, 1888, after the pneumatic tire was invented, um, the ownership of bicycles exploded, as I said, and what that did is it reduced crowding in cities. After the Industrial Revolution, people have moved from the rural areas into the cities to work in the factories, and of course there is huge congestion, people living in small, cheap housing to be near their factories, and they're working most of the time, when they're not working, they're sleeping. When they have a bicycle, what can they do? Well, they can commute. A person can only walk so far in one or two hours, but they can cycle three or four times further. So once people have bicycles, they can start to move out of the areas around their factory. So people can start to commute, and you can reduce crowding in the center of cities. People's standard of living improves. These people who are basically living around their factories could now travel to the countryside. If you have a holiday, you could travel into the countryside and you could walk. You could even go to the, the seaside if you could cycle that far. So it improved people's standard of living. Uh, bicycles relieve poverty. Um, an experiment done in Uganda and Tanzania and Sri Lanka showed that if you give um, people in poverty a bicycle, you can improve their income by up to 35%. Because they can travel further, they can go further, they can carry more things, they have more freedom. So basically bicycles help people. Uh, another huge thing was female emancipation. Women didn't get the vote in England until, oh, I don't know where, 1910. I should research that. That should be another talk. I know Australia was first in the world. That was about 1905, I think. I will have to research that. I apologize. But a huge part of female emancipation was the introduction of the safety bicycle. Once women had bicycles and they started to make um, female groups of cyclists, they could cycle out of the city. They had freedom. They could actually travel. They had freedom. It gave them self-reliance. It gave them independence. And it was a big push uh, for women to get emancipation, basically. And another huge thing it did for women was the clothes. Um, before bicycles, women's clothes were long dresses and very stiff and not very... Uh, useful, not very easy to wear. Once bicycles were invented, clothes were reformed. There was a revolution in clothing, I suppose, and women um, developed clothes they could wear to ride on bicycles. So the introduction of the bicycle did a lot for women in the late 1890s. Manufacturing, of course. Um, 
building a bicycle is the stepping stone to many other industries. Um, automobiles, aircraft, bull bearings, lots of things like that. So companies that started off building bicycles then moved on to many other things. Um, a good example, of course, is Wilbur and Orville Wright. What are they famous for? They're famous for the very first flight, of course. The very first powered flight, I should say. That's another thing I should research. That would be an excellent topic. And how did they start out? Well, they started out with a bicycle shop. They started out building bicycles and they went from there to flight, of course. And I suppose another one of the most important things at the moment, of course, is the environment. Bicycles reduce oil dependence. I mean, you do have to use oil to make bicycles because they have rubber tires. But a bicycle uses a lot less fuel than a car does, of course. And there are very few emissions, apart from my sweat, as I cycle. So bicycles are very, very good for the environment. Okay, um, I suppose there are problems with bicycles. There's road safety. But I would say that was more to do with the cars on the road than the bicycles on the road. If you can have dedicated cycle lanes in a city uh, without cars stopping on them, it's much safer. A theft, of course. Bicycles are probably one of the most stolen items in the world because they're very easy to resale, resell. They're very easy to resell. And uh, people can make a lot of quick money from those. But other than that, there aren't really many problems associated with cycling. It's very good for your health. It's very good for the environment. You should cycle. Anyway, thanks very much for watching this video. If you liked it, uh, click the like button down here somewhere or share it to your friends. Anybody that wants to study English and learn something, I would love it if they watch these. Uh, you could subscribe. That's about here, I think. And if you have any ideas, any topics you'd like me to talk about, please put them in the comments below. Thank you. Have a nice day. See you next week.